Many, many moons ago, downtown Boca Raton was just a ghost town. It only had 73 housing units and the lowest office rents in the county. That dramatically changed with the arrival of the most famous of Palm Beach County's iconic outdoor shopping and entertainment complexes, Meisner Park. Welcome to another day in paradise. My name is Alan Brodor, and on this channel, we talk all about what it's really like to live, eat, breathe, sleep, and play in South Florida. Today, we are recapping the history of Meisner Park, a diamond of downtown Boca Raton. It's actually an exciting journey throughout the entire history of Boca itself, so make sure you watch all the way to the end. Also, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps these videos reach more people. And also click on that subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the videos we put out. Meisner Park, it's the center of downtown Boca with inviting gazebos, inside and outdoor dining options. The, it has the Boca Raton Museum of Art, dozens of shops, um, shopping centers, and an amphitheater that hosts major concerts and community events. It's trending destination for locals and visitors alike. Everyone comes here. But this 30-year-old shopping center is more than just a pretty face. Meisner Park, it's located right off the Federal Highway, just a block north of Palmetto Park. It has significantly impacted the stimulating growth of downtown Boca. Before it was built, we had only 73 housing units in downtown Boca Raton, uh, and office rents were at the lowest in the county. Those numbers changed drastically after 1991 with the development of Meisner Park, the 29-acre mixed-use project with shops, restaurants, offices, and apartments. But how did it all begin? The old Boca Raton Mall, which was torn down to build Meisner Park, opened in 1974 and lasted only 15 years. The mall actually holds the city's first escalator. Boca Raton, which had fewer than 1,000 residents in 1950, enjoyed a population boom, but downtown had become forlorn by the late 1980s as peoples and businesses spread out to the suburbs. Its symbol is undoubtedly the Boca Mall. Nostalgia lovers will remember the Jefferson and Brits department stores <laughs> and specialty stores and eateries, plus the Caldwell Theater. In the, uh, in the 1980s, local builder Tom Crocker worked with the Boca's Community Re Redevelopment Agency to restore the old Book Raton Mall. Residents decided to spend $50 million on infrastructure changes and $68 million in bond financing to help with the project to get off the ground. Meisner Park was named after Addison Meisner, the architect who helped Henry Flagler build Palm Beach and build Book Raton all from the ground up in pink. <laughs> Boca Raton citizens love to take their out-of-town guests and visitors to Meisner Park to show it off, President Abrams declared. Meisner Park has also hosted many excellent cultural and community events over the 25 years. By 2002, Boca had 689 housing units and approximately 900 being built downtown. Office rents became the highest in South Florida it's ever been. The 14-fold rise in assessed property values from 1990 to 2002 improved the city's tax base tremendously. In 2005, after property values increased again, Meisner Park started, playing, started paying for itself. Meisner Park was highly controversial, controversial initially, but it rolled with the punches and kept up with the times. Today, nearly everyone points to, the, to Meisner Park as an example of a good urban design. It was one of the first new urbanist projects in the country, and yet, after all these years, it's still a top-rated destination. A 30-acre mixed-use center opened in January 11, uh, January 11th, 1991, and now holds about 45 retail shops, restaurants, uh, together with an amphitheater, about 262,000 square feet of office space, I think just under 300 residential units, and of course, the Plaza Rio Promenade. In October 2010, the American, uh, the American Planning Association named Plaza Real one of the top 10 spots on its annual Great Places in America issue. The avenue holds palm trees, benches, three wrought iron gazebos, public art, and four fountains. Cooper Carey designed Meisner like a classical Mediterranean revival town center. Worth mentioning is the Boca Raton Museum of Art. It's part of an international network with over 600 emerging artists. Another heritage of the building is the National Cartoon Museum, which opened from 1992 to 2002. 
Talking about Meisner Park, I cannot uh, not not mention the amphitheater. It's an outdoor amphitheater, which can be found in the northeast corner of Meisner Park. And the mid-size venue was priced at $6.2 million to design it. It, cons it consists of a stage circled by a colonnade with a statue and fountain at the entrance of the lawn area. The venue seats 3,500 people, which can be expanded to 4,200 uh, in the lawn and general admission. The venue originated in November 2002 with an inauguration ceremony by Henrietta Rock de Hornell, followed by a concert by the Florida Symphony Orchestra. The city took ownership of the amphitheater in uh, 2010, September, and changing the venue's name as well. It's also the summer home of the Boca Raton Sinfonia. Today, Meisner Park includes about 240,000 square feet of retail space, about 270,000 square feet of office space luxury rental apartments, townhomes, and of course we got cultural art space, and we have about 5,000 uh, seating capacity amphitheater. So, some of my favorite things about Meisner, I love Kapow and the Dubliner, and I'm not sure if you know, but the owners, the subculture group, has some things coming to Meisner Park. We actually know a couple things, you could watch a later video, because we're gonna be talking all about it. What's your favorite part about Meisner? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear all about it. What's the last time you visited Meisner Park? Or anything change? Maybe you're still planning your first visit. Well, share your thoughts with us, we'd love to hear them. Also, don't forget to like this video, share it with somebody you know who wants to see it, and don't forget, click that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end, guys. I'm Alan Brodor with Team 22, and I hope you have another day in paradise.